Welcome. This is Don Finn, and in the next five minutes, I'm going to give you a summary of Jim Collins' books, or why don't you need 10 years and dozens of research students to figure all of this out. There's Jim Collins, handsome, well-off, lives in a beautiful spot. He's a boulder guy. Those are the flat iron mountains out there. Beautiful place to go hiking at. This is where he does his teaching and get all his graduate students from. Stanford University, nice place too. Bill Scholas is his first major book, Good to Great, sold 4 million copies. How the Mighty Fall talks about why we mess things up. And lastly, Great by Choice. I really can't figure out what's different about it from the other books. And I just spent over probably about $2,000 of my time reading it in two hours. So here's my summary. So I said nuts to all of this. And I'm, I'm just going to summarize these four books in ten rules. Rule number one, have a plan and go for it. You know, as Mary Kay said, most people plan their vacations better than their careers. So while this is common sense, how many of you really have a go-for-it plan? Number two, bring meaning to your work. Or think about it the other way. Do you really want to do non-meaningful work? Number three, stay focused. You know, I, I view us as light beings. We focus our light. We turn it into lasers. Lasers are so powerful they can cut through steel. Do you really think you can avoid the laws of physics? You know, we've got to stay highly focused. I always ask myself, am I on the beam, am I on the beam, am I on the beam? And the yin-yang of it, which is so much of the black and white here, is where we've got to be open to new opportunities too. So this duality, life is duality. He expresses that in his books. Rule number four, hire people you can trust. Now, do you really need to read any books to know this fact? No, you may read, need to read some books to understand how to hire people you can trust, which, of course, doesn't exist in any of his four books. Um, rule number five, I think your mom might have told you this one, don't be a jerk. Nobody likes to work for one. Nobody likes to hang out with one, except for maybe other jerks. Number six, this comes out of Marketing 101. You test, test, test. So he says fire bullets, then, then fire cannonballs. Okay, it's just languaging the same thing that's been around forever. What do you think total quality management is? We test. Deming taught us. Test how you manufacture things to get to towards perfection of manufacturing. You test how you do anything in your business, not just marketing, not just manufacturing. Are you testing hiring practices, for example? Number seven, enough's enough. You know, gluttony is one of the seven sins, okay? Uh, one of the challenges, of course, with enough is enough is you don't know where that line is many times until after you've crossed it. Now, number eight, with all the change going on out there, we have to be open to it. We have to embrace the fact, you know, yeah, we'd like to stay in the middle of the road and be really comfortable, but when you do that, you just get run over. So we've got to be open to the change, but as I say here, just not for the sake of change. And this is what can happen to us. We can get bored at being good at something. It's happened to me. It's happened to plenty of people I know. We have to watch that trap and not just change because we need change. Change within the situation. How do you make this work that you're now highly profitable about at more fun for you instead of doing something else. Now, number nine, give time its due. Whether you call it the flywheel effect, Gladwell's 10,000 hours, or my friend Lloyd says three years, it's not going to happen overnight. There is no instant pudding, as Dr. Deming would say. You hang in there long enough, you stay true to your convictions, and sooner or later, it'll start coming to you. And last but not least, be prepared. This is a crazy world out there. Uh, the amount of change is going to be constant. Uh, the, the level of risk is going to change constantly. So what type of risk can squash your business tomorrow? What type of risk can put you out of business through a series of thousand cuts? Are you really prepared for that? Can you get insurance for it? Is the other way to mitigate those risks? So there's the four books summarized in 10 slides. No graduate students required. The real question, and unfortunately the one that I've been searching for, and I know a lot of answers to it already, but that's not addressed in these books, is why don't we do what we know we should do? You can quote me on this. If it doesn't make sense, don't try to make sense out of it. The answer to not doing these 10 things has nothing to do with logic. So it's really the emotional landscape which is the next frontier. That's the blockage. Removing that blockage is the true opportunity, whether for yourself or at your company. So, that's me. That's my school. Probably a lot of you went to that one. That's the result of my following these 10 rules and getting those blockages out of the way. So if you're curious about what we do, 
There's a, a website for the companies, the small to mid-sized companies, best in the business for what we do. And there's me and, and the speaking that I do and some of the consulting I still do. So if you're interested, please go to those websites. Hope you learned something in these five minutes.